what is up everybody so today apple has released the next beta as we expected ios 17 beta 7 now along with this apple has also released ipad os 17 beta 7 watch os 10 beta 7 mac os sonoma 14 beta 6 tv os 17 beta 7 and homepod os 17 beta 7. now there is a new build number in this update so if you go to settings general and if you go to above you'll see that click on the is version you'll see that the version number is 21a 5319a now we didn't expect the build number to come to an e this soon but that's there and we'll talk a little bit later about what that could mean but as we get closer to a it actually means we are closer to an rc release and this is quite surprising and nice to see now along with the build version we also have a new modem firmware and the new one here is 2.08.02 this is on my iphone 14 pro now on my device it came in at 686.9 megabytes and my last update for beta 6 was somewhere around 700 megabytes a little over 700 megabytes so this one is definitely a little smaller but it does seem to have fixed a lot of things as we'll see later now in terms of what is new the very first thing that has been fixed rather is the mute switch in last beta even if you switched this switch here you would not get a vibrating feedback from the phone but in this version they have fixed it and to be honest in my opinion i think it's actually a little bit better it does give an extra feedback as compared to before if it was just a single vibration it has changed to a double one i might be remembering it wrong though let me know in the comment section what you think after having missed it for the last release i think it's pretty nice to have it now the second major update as we saw in last beta that apple had moved back the end call button back to the center on the now calling screen or when we are in a call but if you went to the keypad section in the last beta you could still see as you can see here it was still on the right side in beta 7 they have fixed that as well and brought it to the middle so that's been fixed and i think a lot of people are going to find this to be the natural position that they're used to having this button so that's pretty nice now the next feature has to do with conversational awareness and airpods pro 2 so if you are on a beta software on your airpods which i am and remember if you want to get on beta softwares for the airport pro 2s you need a mac to enable developer mode and then be able to download them you can do it through windows as well through third-party applications and someday I'll maybe make a tutorial on it. Let me know in the comment section below. So, but for the new version here, what you can see is that, especially for conversational awareness, as you see, you go here to AirPods and the adaptive mode. In the adaptive mode, if you have conversation awareness on, what this feature actually does is that if there is somebody around you talking, it's gonna lower the volume so that you can hear what's happening around you. Now, what has happened in this beta is that it's somewhat similar to a splash screen that you see when you open an app for the first time. The same way for AirPods Pro 2, when this happens for the first time, you will hear a sound notification which says that it has lowered your volume so that you can understand what's happening around you and something of that sort. To be honest, it feels a little weird because if that's gonna happen for the first time and you're not expecting it, it's gonna take you off guard a little bit. And especially if somebody's saying something important and that's the first time you use it, I think it's going to cause a little bit of trouble, a small inconvenience to be honest, but still. Now for the next update, if you remember the messages application in our last update, if you long press on this plus button, you actually get this photo picker straight away instead of going to the first tab in the plus list. So this seems to have been fixed a little bit. In the previous beta, I was getting a bug where it, where this picker would slide down and I would just have a gray bar here. So this seems to be a fixed and a lot of people are also reporting that it's much smoother. Um, so let me know in the comment section again what you think and if this has been proving good for you. Now another thing that I mentioned in the last update was that Apple Cash was showing up for some people in European countries. Now this still seems to be a bug and we don't know for sure if Apple is expanding in European countries because people in these countries, especially Germany and Hungary that are seeing this, are not actually able to activate this by going to their Apple Wallet application. So they're not able to use Apple Cash, but they can see that pop up sometimes. So this might still just be a bug or it might be a feature that's coming in future where Europe is getting expanded with the functionality of Apple Cash. We'll have to wait and see. 
Now, the next thing is, I think that this version is a lot snappier. I think all the animations look pretty snappy. As you can see, if you just open an app, it, they seem to be loading really quick right here. And this just seems to be much more smoother as compared to previous version. I did have to leave the phone for some time. And that's what I usually do after updating. I leave it for like 20 minutes or 30 minutes just to do its optimizations. And I do want to mention that this time my phone did get a little warmer than it did in beta 6. But after that, it just got cool. So I think there's nothing to worry about here. Now, in terms of storage, if you see, if you go to settings, general and storage, iPhone storage, many people have reported that they are seeing much less system data and iOS data, one of these to be reduced significantly. Now, this doesn't seem to be reduced for me in just before updating, I did the screenshot and it did seem to be very similar to what I see now. So as you can see here, it was 16.98 and 10.98 and currently 17.93 and 10.98 so it seems like the system data is actually increased but i'm pretty sure that's because the optimization is still going on and this cache will get cleared now today apple also released an update to the shazam app and if you didn't know shazam is now owned by apple i think since 2018 and they released a new version today where you do have two new lock screen widgets so if we go to the lock screen and we go to customize and we try to add widgets, you can see that there are two new Shazam widgets right here. The first one, the small one, is just to quickly go and start Shazamming versus this one actually gives you the last Shazam that you did. I don't use Shazam very regularly, but for the people you do, it can be a great one. Now also, something that I didn't mention in the last video is that Shazam has gotten new animations for when it recognizes the sound. I'll put a kind of small video right here, up here when I, I'll do that later and put a B-roll up here and you'll be able to see the new animations. Now, another thing that I missed in the last update was that if you go to wallpapers and you try to customize it, and let's say that you have a wallpaper which you want, let's say you want these rings to be down. What you can now do is if you pinch and bring it down here, you can see that it says wallpaper extended. So what it does is kind of blurs and puts a gradient on top so that it can fit. And I think that's really nice for some wallpapers that looks cool, but for some it not really. I prefer not to do it most times for some wallpapers that have patterns and stuff, though I think it can look cool. So that's something good if you want to do. Another thing that came in in last update is True Tone in quick settings. So if you search for True Tone, you'll see that here there is now a quick toggle to turn on True Tone. Again, I don't use True Tone, but if you do, you can toggle it straight away from quick settings or quick search right from here now. Now, getting on to the bugs, I did see some bugs just before I updated actually. This is from beta 6, not beta 7, but I did see that some of the widgets keep resetting or they don't show up from time to time. And what especially I have seen for the clock widget is if you have a world clock, which has four or multiple cities there, they keep resetting sometimes just randomly and then I have to go back, click on edit widget and then I can kind of select the city again. So if I go here, edit widget and then I have to select this again in order to get the right one. And this also happened with the shortcuts widget as well as the home widget sometimes for me. So this has been there for me for all along the 17 betas. Um, let me know again in the comment section if you have seen this. Now, another bug that I've seen is in the music application and I saw this when I was playing music in my car. Now my own car doesn't have CarPlay, so it was disconnected by Bluetooth, but it does recognize that Bluetooth as a car. And suddenly after about five minutes of playing music, it started playing glitch sounds. And I just had to skip to next track. I tried scrubbing through the timeline as well, but it would keep playing screeching sounds. So I had to skip to next song and then come back and then it was fixed. I have experienced this before once, probably in either 16 betas or early, uh, very early 17 betas. I don't know if it has to do with iOS betas or does it have to do something with the system or Apple Music, but whatever it is, I did see that once. It has not repeated again, that's a good thing. Now, some people, very importantly, have reported that after updating, if you go to settings and software update, they cannot see like you just saw there, this iOS 17 developer beta popped up after some time. But a lot of people are actually seeing that either this has completely been turned off automatically or it's still on, but you don't see the beta updates option 
or sometimes you can also see that you will see a notification saying that your email is not registered with betas whereas that's clearly not the case but that seems to be a bug hopefully that will be solved soon and that could be on the server side as well well some people have also reported problems with cellular network after updating to beta 7 i just saw a couple of people though reporting this and they have tried to reset the phone and restart it multiple times but it has not helped so always make sure if you're on betas before you update back up your phone to a mac or icloud so that you can restore from it if something like this goes wrong if you don't do that it's probably very difficult for you to go back to it now another important bug that i think some people have reported again i found this on reddit is that if you go to app store they're not able to open app store and they keep getting an error message saying unable to connect a lot of people have also put a screenshot that said that they tried to open a particular app and it said that you first need to have access to internet and because app store cannot verify this app before you open it that's something i've never seen before but people have reported this in wild so be careful while you are updating and if you do find that something like that happens make sure to open the feedback app and report your bugs talking about the feedback app actually just before updating to beta 7 i actually could not refresh my beta uh, i actually could not refresh my feedback application and for example these release notes they were not showing up again i think that was on the server side and they have fixed it so now it's back and you can see them right here now if we go and take a look at the battery health we'll look a little bit in deeper about the battery performance later but a lot of people are reporting that their maximum capacity has reduced even further after an update to beta 7 most of the times you see a two percent drop from that's the common thread that i'm seeing between all the people for me honestly it did not decrease surprisingly from beta 6 to beta 7 whereas before beta 6 i had seen drop quite a bit from beta 5 to beta 7 so i would definitely say that ios 17 betas have been really bad for batteries and uh, they should definitely not do this that should be a priority that apple fixes and i think they must be working on it but none of the betas before this i've been on betas since ios 13 i think and i've always been on betas but i've never seen betas affect the battery health so much as much as ios 17 betas have as we saw this already has a build version with a at the end which means that we are very close to an rc build now at this point we are on a weekly schedule for updates so there can be a few possibilities of how this would play out number one could be that we will see an rc build next tuesday and then apple will take a break the first week of september and then release the final build in the second week of september when they launch iphones or the or the second possibility which i would be rooting for is that they might be having the apple event a week early and might be having it in the first week itself or the third option is that we'll still get beta 8 and it will just be a different build number with a again in the build number that is the most probable possibility but i would still be rooting for the early iphone release so that we can take a look at the new iphones right away now coming to the battery life i have definitely seen better battery life in ios 17 beta 6 as compared to ios 17 beta 5 and i said this in my short as well that i released just yesterday with five top features that my battery life has been much better with beta 6. I hope this continues with beta 7 and we don't go back to the schedule that we had till beta 5 where I had really really poor battery life and I would have to charge the phone multiple times a day unless I was sitting at a desk and connected to a MagSafe charger. Now if you want to take a look at the release notes I'll leave a link down in the description box but basically we have a lot of resolve fixes and a lot of new things actually that they have mentioned here. Not all the new features are kind of tangible to be tested right away as you can see there are new features with airpods where they have fixed the adaptive audio apart from that again apple has a lot of resolved issues and a lot of known issues as well but what i'm happy about is even with the small sizes of the updates apple has been fixing a lot of stuff including in beta 6 as well as beta 7 so let's hope for the best i'll leave the link to the release notes if you want to go through them right in the description box below and i'll see you next week with a new update hopefully with an rc build and please let me know in the comment section down below how this beta has been for you or if you are updating to this beta or not. And if you have any questions, I'll definitely read through them if you put them in the comment section below and answer them as best to my possibility. Now, if this video helped you or you liked it, please leave a like and please don't forget to subscribe. I'm just a small channel just starting out, so it would definitely help if you could leave a like and subscribe. 
Thank you so much. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Thank you.